I don't know what your definition of dangerous is. <laughs> I love that so much, though. <laughs> that was adorable. <laughs> I'm gonna, okay, start. We're going to try again as Wes almost fell. All right, popular. <laughs> Week three, popular. <laughs> I don't know how you define the word dangerous. Maybe it's the ability to go to the lake and jump off the highest part of the rocks. I don't know if your definition of dangerous is longboarding downhill um, and uh, not stopping and trying not to get the, the speed wobbles. I don't know what your definition of dangerous is, but I think one of the most dangerous things about God is how he chooses to use our life and the people around us and our stories and who we are and the things that like we have in our hands, the things that, that have happened to us, it's so dangerous the way God will use that stuff. And I know you think, well, that, that doesn't, what do you mean? That doesn't sound real. What I mean by that is when you think of your faith, many of us see faith as a tame, safe, private decision. Something that happens in our life or we go to a church and it's kind of separate one category of our life. But one of the most dangerous things that can happen to someone who follows Jesus is when they begin to actually follow him. When they actually begin to put his teachings into practice, when you and I begin to listen to the small voice of God that stirs inside of us. I remember when I was younger, there was this young kid that I knew who was a super Christian, the kind of Christian where I was like, I don't really know like if I want to be like that. You know, like, again, talking about popular, right? I wanted to be popular, and this kid seems to have just abandoned that desire. He was just a Christian, and he just did his thing. He didn't watch the movies that I watched. He didn't do any of the cool things that I thought were cool. Um, but this kid ended up growing up and becoming what's called a missionary. And that's a fancy word for someone who moves somewhere else to just proclaim and tell people the good news of Jesus and plant churches. And I'm going to tell you what, this guy lives a risky, cool, dangerous life. In fact, this guy is constantly, you know, handling snakes. And this guy now is like ripped. I mean, he's like ripped. He's not like an ugly dude. He's a good looking dude. And he's got a wife and, and lots of kids. And it's just kind of one of those things where when I step back and I realize this dangerous life that he lived, where he just followed Jesus recklessly and he listened to that voice and that idea and he just basically said to God here's what's in my hands and God did something with it and I look at my life and I think about like I just went through public school and barely got out with B's and C's and I just have constantly lived a life where I'm always worried about what people think of me and I'm constantly living a life where I'm just trying to play it safe and do the right thing and it all in all usually feels pretty non-dangerous this is my point and I want to say something to you that maybe you've never connected the dots with yet. But for some of us, the most dangerous thing we could do is trust God with our life and trust God with our story and actually put in God's hands what we have in ours. Some of us don't follow Jesus because we're afraid to follow Jesus. We don't think we should be allowed to because of how messed up, broken, wrong, sinful, you fill in the blank, whatever you think it is. And I want to remind you that Jesus does not treat us the way we deserve. In fact, one of the most important things is because of Jesus, we can change the effect we have on others because God does not define us. Jesus does not define us by our darkest moments. 
I don't need to sit back and compare myself to another Christian like my missionary buddy who is so amazing and awesome. I don't need to sit back and say, man, I'm lame. I'm horrible. You know what I need to do is sit back and say, what's my story? What's in my hands? What can I offer? And some of us don't even think like that because you're so afraid that you're so broken, sinful, weird, wrong. You're too popular. You're too unpopular to do anything that Jesus would lead you to do. But I want to read to you one of the very teachings of Jesus in Luke chapter 6. Start reading with me in Luke chapter 6, verse number 37. I think you're going to like these teachings of Jesus because they apply to all sorts of things, but today they're going to mean something very special to you. Do not judge and you will not be judged. Do not condemn and you will not be condemned. Forgive and you will be forgiven. Give and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over. It will be poured into your lap for with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. Now this could apply to all sorts of things. Today, here's how I think it applies to you and me. You're not defined by your darkest moments, but you know what? We always define one another by our darkest moments. I mean, talk about being popular, right? When was the last time you talked about someone behind their back because of what they did at that party? When was the last time you talked bad about someone because of how that person loves to hop around and date all sorts of people? What's the last time that you started talking and spreading rumors about people because it made you look superior and better? I mean, think about all the ways that you and I, we love the idea that Jesus does not define us by our darkest moment but we define everybody around us by our darkest moments. Did your dad or your mom walk out on you? Did they hurt you? Did they abandon you? Did you have someone in your life, a boyfriend, a girlfriend, hurt you? You define them by their darkest moment. But God doesn't define you by your darkest moment. This is what's keeping you and I from following Jesus. And this is what's keeping you and I from having the most influence on others is as Jesus said, don't judge and you won't be judged. Don't condemn, you won't be condemned. But forgive and you'll be forgiven. The measure you use will be measured unto you. Jesus' point here is, guess what? If you're gonna be judgy and weird and hold people, define them by their darkest moments, that is equally what people are gonna do to you. But what if today you and I chose to recklessly follow Jesus in our schools, in our homes, in our lives, and we said, I'm gonna be a reckless force that just sees the good in people. I'm going to be a person of influence who refuses to let what's happened to me or been done to me or all the things in my past define me. And I'm going to use my story in my life to influence others. What if you stopped the gossip? What if you were the end of the chain of the person who's spreading the bad news? What if you stopped defining people by their darkest moments because God doesn't do that to you and you started measuring in all sorts of new ways? What if you started right now with your circle of friends, your people this summer, would you make this summer matter by being a force for good and use your story, even your darkest moments to say, God forgives me. So guess what? I'm going to be forgiving. God doesn't judge me. So I'm not going to be judgy and weird. God doesn't condemn me. So I'm not going to condemn other people. This is the amazing truth. We get to sit in the hope and the love and the faith of Jesus and we get to spread that everywhere we go and we get to look at people in their life as goofy, as weird, or as popular or unpopular as they are and we get to say, oh, none of that matters. Let's go live life to the full. Let's go love people. Let's share in this life together. This is the amazing news. The measure you use will be measured unto you. I don't know about you, this excites me. It excites me because I don't have to be defined by all the things that I don't do well, the ways that I'm too popular or I'm unpopular. And I don't have to be defined by all of that stuff. And then when I get that message, when I understand that that's how God treats me, I can give that freely. You guys, we cannot give what we do not have. And I would tell you this, that if you're a judgy, mean, gossipy person, you are not only letting that limit your influence, but ultimately what you are doing is you are not believing truly that you're forgiven, that you're loved, that you're accepted. So I invite you today, how can you start thinking tangibly, practically about making your summer matter? How do you make this summer matter? 
by being a person of influence who doesn't sit on the sidelines and think about all the ways you could be amazing. You just choose to be secretly awesome today. And the way you start is by bringing out a good measure, just being open and kind and loving and choosing not to define yourself or others by your darkest moment because Jesus can change the effect that we have on others by us simply looking at others the way he looks at us.